Hi guys, welcome back to Enough is Enough, XR Troika here and today we're going to be going through Ying. Ying is the only attacking operator to be released this season. We're going to be taking you through the gadget, we're going to be taking you through the gun and we're also going to be deciding if she's worth 25 and a half thousand renown for all you non-season pass holders out there. Making sure that we give you all the information that you need to make sure you buy an operator that suits your playstyle. All this coming right up. So, as usual, we're going to jump straight into it. On screen now, you've got a little bit of gameplay using Ying. This footage is from Ace of Pyrite. I know he's really been enjoying playing Ying, and he's got some quite nice clips that hopefully we're going to showcase today. So, looking over the bio, we can see that she's called Sui Mi Ling. Uh, her nickname is obviously Ying, and she comes out of Hong Kong. Moving into the details and statistics, this is always the juicy bit. So, her unique ability is called a Candela, and this is a cluster of flash charges that can either be anchored on surfaces or rolled out as a grenade. It can also be thrown. Uh, she's a two-armor, two-speed, obviously, attacking operator. So, the Candela is going to be used very similar to Fuse's cluster charges in the sense that you can attach them to a breakable surface. Ying primarily is going to be quite a an entry sort of operator she's going to be breaching a lot of objectives trying to get her ch cluster charges out there get the enemy dazed and get in there and take advantage of that ying has got two guns at her disposal the first one being a t95 lsw this is a light machine gun and it's really interesting because it behaves a lot more like an assault rifle it's got a decent damage it's got a little bit lower rate of fire, as you'd expect from, you know, a light machine gun. Its capacity is 80 rounds, which is a lot, but the reload speed on this gun is really, really quick. And this is one of the things that's going to give you the edge. You've got a lot of bullets, and you're able to reload the gun relatively quickly compared to other light machine guns in the game. Ying's second option is a shotgun. This is called the 612. And it's the exact same shotgun that uh, Legion gets the option to use. Legion's has already got an internal suppressor built in. Ying's does not. It's a uh, it's sort of a real close quarters shotgun. It's only got six rounds in the magazine, but it is a drum magazine. So this is going to be able to be reloaded really quickly. It's just got a few less bullets than, you know, your you conventional shotgun, as you would expect. Um, I'm going to be recommending a loadout later on, and it's going to be the light machine gun loadout. Reason for this being, I feel like the 612 is just a little bit weak. I think that it could do with a little bit of higher damage. Uh, the damage is quite low for only having six rounds in the magazine. Obviously, it's a shotgun, so the range is a little bit reduced as well. And if you're going to be breaching that room uh, using your candelas and trying to sort of coordinate a bit of a push, you're going to want a few more bullets because you're inevitably going to miss shots. I think that six, you know, you're going to, you're maybe going to struggle to get it done. So I think the light machine gun is going to always be the way to go. So if you guys have been paying attention to the footage that's been rolling in the background, you'll notice that a lot of these occasions, Ace is actually going in with the drone first to find out who's in the room. Once he's acquired this information, that's when he'll then decide how to deploy the candela, whether that's through a breachable surface or whether that's just thrown in with the timer like a conventional flashbang. What you're going to see is throughout the video that Ying is going to be best used as part of an attacking team that's all communicating through headset. I don't think that you're going to see much success using Ying in a solo queuing environment. I would highly, highly recommend that you use her as part of a team. So now moving on to some basic recall pattern testing down in Hereford Base as per usual. You can see here that due to the fact that she's got quite a large magazine, you actually reach the limit of your recoil within about 40 bullets, so about half of your magazine. But you can see there that the recoil, for the most part, is kind of straight up. There's a little bit of like a light S shape to it, if you will. There's you know a few small curves and stuff like that. But nothing really that you'd expect out of the ordinary. I think this is going to be really manageable just by holding down on your mouse or your analog stick. Going into burst fire mode, as you'd expect, it's very, very tight. You've got a really, really nice sort of, I don't know, five to six bullets high by maybe three bullets wide spread on that. And I think that that's probably as good as you're going to get. Perfect for headshots. I don't think you're going to have any trouble whatsoever firing this gun in a burst. Opening it up to full automatic now and shooting at range, trying to keep the recoil managed. You can see there that I'm using quite short taps. Uh, obviously, it is an LMG, so the recoil's, you know, we've, we've seen it on the wall. It does go up quite a little bit. Um, but for the most part, it's quite good. And it's, you know, you've got 80 shots, so you've got a lot of bullets. So you're going to expect to miss a few shots. Uh, and you know, that's all part of the sort of all part of the balance of the game. So you can see there that the recoil patterns are as we'd expect. Now I ran this test using a muzzle brake, holographic sight, 
No laser, because obviously I don't really want to give my position away. I don't really think that it's going to give you much. You're never really going to use this light machine gun in a hip fire sort of scenario. So just the holographic sight and just the muzzle break. Okay, so quickly now I'm going to take you through the three ways that you can deploy or detonate the Candela charge. So the first one that we're going to look at is going to be rolling it. Now it's really interesting. You can roll this device and it'll actually hug walls. So provided that you throw it against the wall like you just saw there, it will actually hug onto the wall and if there's a drone hole, it will turn 90 degrees, actually go through the drone hole, go out the other side into the room or you know whatever's, whatever's the other side and detonate depending on how long you've set the timer for. I'm just going to freeze the frame right there. You can see on screen there where you'd expect your crosshairs to be. There is a circle split into three and that's going to denote how long the charge fuses for. So for example, if you only hold it for the first one, it's going to go off very quickly. Hold it to the second one and it's going to be slightly delayed. Hold it to the third one and it's going to be at its max delay. Now here's a handy little trick that you could use. If there's a soft wall maybe, you could place your breaching charge down on it. Ying gets the option of breaching charges or smoke grenades. I would preference taking the breaching charges, it seems to make a little bit more sense. So you could throw your candela up against the wall, through the drone hole, breach the door or the wall and you can see there, perfect timing, Jaeger's flashed and you could get the easy kill. Now we're going to show you how the candela interacts with a Jaeger device. So the only things that counter the candela are going to be Jaegers, explosions, shock wire or bullets. And you can see there that because it was in its sealed form, so it was one unit, the ADS device only had to fire once for it to destroy it. Now we're going to move on and show you how you can throw these things. So they throw very similar to the way that you can attach them to a breakable surface. You get exactly the same delay feature, so you can choose to delay it you know, at stage one, stage two, or stage three. And you can actually time this so that they actually synchronize and go off at the same time. So if you hold your first one down for three, you hold your second one down for two, and you hold your last one down for one, they will all actually go off at pretty much the same yeah. time. You can just see there, I just messed up the timings a little bit, but it's not something that I would highly recommend doing all the time, because obviously you're gonna wanna save it, you're gonna wanna save something. You've not really got many resources as Ying, so if you've no candelas, you know, you're just a normal operator. I'd recommend if you knew that there was people in the room, then you could maybe try and synchronize two, so set one to three, set one to two, throw them in, and see how you do. Uh, moving on to the last way that you can use the candela charges, you can actually deploy them onto a soft surface and they will detonate through just like a fuse cluster charge. You can see here that I've got Ace with me. He's playing Jaeger and he's gonna place three ADS charges down on that crate. I'm gonna go on the other side, place the candela through, and we're gonna see how many ADSs it takes to get rid of one candela. So you can see there that I set it to three so that I've got time to run around and see it happen. And you can see that the ADSs get rid of every single candela charge that comes through. However, place the next one down and one candela charge will actually burn out all the ADSs. So this time, absolutely all the candelas go through and you can see that it causes the flashbang effect. Obviously Ying is immune to her own flashbang effect and Jaeger is obviously not. Ying is not immune to other flashbangs from attackers so she can still be flashbanged by other attacking players and Ying's flashbangs will also flash other attackers. That's just something that's worth bearing in mind. You don't want to go fl go around flashing your teammates all the time. So as we can see, the only real counters to the candela charge is going to be shock wire. Uh, if you roll it through bandit shock wire, that'll destroy it. If you roll it through barbed wire, that'll slow it down. Jaeger's ADSs will totally counter it. And it's always better if you know there's a Jaeger on the other team to try and de detonate it through a soft wall because the candela splits into multiple charges and the ADS has more to deal with instead of it just going through as one and the ADS will always be able to get it with just one shot. The candela can also be shot in it whilst it's being detonated, very similar to a fuse cluster charge can be, and explosions affect it as well. So be careful if you're gonna be breaching and using your candela on the same surface because you may damage it and may render it useless. So to round all this up, I think that Ying is a great attacking operator. Make sure you use her as part of a team that's communicating together so that you can coordinate pushes. Obviously you are going to flashbang your own teammates so you want to be careful about that and add that into your consideration. They want to be going in a couple of seconds after they've detonated but the defenders in that time will still be flashed and your attacking teammates will still have the advantage. So the question that you're all going to be asking is, is Ying an operator that's going to complement and suit my playstyle? I think that if you work as part of an existing team so you've got some teammates in the game and you communicate through headset, that's going to be really important. 
if you enjoy entering into the building and pushing and being that player that can play off the back of a little bit of pressure and aggression, definitely for you. Obviously, she's not as technical as some of the operators out there, but there's definitely a learning curve, and I think it's something that's going to become really crucial to get good at in the coming months. I'd just like to take this opportunity quickly to thank everyone that's, that's been supporting the channel recently. We've seen loads more views coming in, loads of new subscribers, and it's really good to see that you're enjoying the content that we're putting out here. We're trying really hard, so if you could leave us a comment down in the description, that'd be fantastic. If you've not already, please hit like and subscribe, click the bell to get the notifications, and we'll see you in the next one.